So the next one we get into, man, is this discovery could be the most significant and long awaited of the 21st century. Let's check it out. If you think about it, the Earth is a big time capsule. Archaeologists are the ones tasked to help us recover everything that's lost by time. And among them are the most astonishing and unbelievable finds. From out of place artifacts to breakthroughs that rewrote history, here are the 20 greatest archaeological discoveries ever. Number 20. London Hammer The London Hammer, also known as the London Artifact, is among the most mysterious discoveries of the 20th century, or should I say, the most debated. Discovered in London, Texas in 1936 by Max Hahn and a companion, the hammer was found encased in ancient rock, leading to speculation about its age of origin. The hammer is an iron tool with a wooden handle and is around 6 inches long with a diameter of 1 inch. The size and shape suggest it was used for fine work or with soft metals. What's bizarre, however, is the fact that the hammer has- That ain't what we want to hear. We want to hear if any blood on it. Any type of blood on it, DNA, you know what I mean? <laughs> or is it just me? I'm sorry. Not significantly rusted since its discovery, and parts of the wooden handle have begun to transform into coal. Its style is consistent with tools from the late 19th century, particularly those used in mining. Now you're probably thinking, there's nothing really bizarre about this hammer, right? Well, it would be an ordinary find if not for the fact that it was found encased in an ancient rock formation. Carl Bau, a creationist who acquired the hammer in the 1980s, promoted the London hammer as evidence of a pre-flood civilization. He argued that it challenged the conventional geological timeline and theories of evolution. However, this claim is highly controversial and not widely accepted in the scientific community. Skeptics of the London Hammer offer a more logical explanation. They suggest that the hammer was a tool that somehow became encased in a limestone concretion through natural geological processes. Even so, many believe that the London Hammer is evidence of time travel, or perhaps a sign that a civilization, or even a person of the past, had advanced knowledge. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19 the Coso Artifact. In 1961, Wallace Lane, Virginia Maxey, and Mike Mikesell made an intriguing find near Olancha, California, a spark plug. Not just an ordinary spark plug, but one that seemed like it came from a time when spark plugs didn't exist just yet. This object was later known as the Coso Artifact. It was initially speculated to be an out-of-place artifact, possibly indicating the presence of an advanced ancient civilization or other extraordinary explanations. Just like the London Hammer, the Koso artifact was encased within what seemed to be a 500,000-year-old geode. Naturally, it immediately became an anomaly. The perceived ancient age of the Koso artifact led to its presentation as a potential out-of-place artifact. The idea that a modern spark plug could be found in such an ostensibly ancient geological formation was seen by some as evidence of time travel, advanced ancient civilizations, or even extraterrestrial interventions. These speculations were bolstered by initial claims that the enclosing material was a geode, a type of rock formation that typically takes a considerable amount of time to develop. However, just like the London Hammer, many believe that the Koso artifact is nothing but a hoax. Even so, many consider it one of the most intriguing finds in the contemporary <laughs> age. Number 18. Tutankhamun's Tomb In 1922, one of the most significant finds in the history of mankind was found by archaeologist Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon, the final resting place of the young pharaoh Tutankhamun. Before that, the tomb of the young Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun lay hidden beneath the sands of the Valley of the Kings, undiscovered for centuries. Many tombs in the valley had been found and plundered over the years, but Tutankhamun's tomb remained elusive. And so, imagine the delight of archaeologists when it was finally found. After years of meticulous searching, Carter made the breakthrough on November 4, 1922. He discovered steps leading to a sealed door, and behind that door was the intact tomb of Tutankhamun. Carter, along with Lord Carnarvon, opened the tomb, and what they found inside was astonishing. The tomb was filled with thousands of objects, each one a masterpiece of ancient craftsmanship. There were statues, gold jewelry, chariots, weapons, and even Tutankhamun's iconic gold mask. This mask, now a symbol of ancient Egypt, is a stunning piece of art with intricate detailing and made entirely of gold. 
Tutankhamun's tomb provided invaluable insights into the life and culture of ancient Egypt. The artifacts and the tomb painted a picture of the pharaoh's life and time, giving historians and archaeologists a wealth of information to study. This discovery also sparked a worldwide fascination with ancient Egypt, known as Egyptomania. It influenced art, architecture, and even fashion. The story of the young king and the incredible discovery of his tomb captured the imagination of people all over the world. Tutankhamun. Yeah, what happened to the guys that opened the tomb? What happened to them after that? Because I'm of the belief that, bro, when you open a tomb, you don't know what you're opening. And a lot of times you be releasing a curse. You know, a lot of those tombs that people have opened, those people didn't survive long after that. So I want to know what happened to these guys after they opened Tutankhamun's tomb. Tutankhamun's tomb even became more sensationalized for the alleged curses that protected its tomb. Thank you. To this day, many believe that those responsible for revealing King Tut's tomb were given a harrowing punishment. Number 17. See, they, they never go in depth on that. I want them to go in depth on that. Because we're... Don't think if people come across a tomb today, they're not going to open it. I feel like you need to enlighten some people on what that can mean you open in a tomb these days, bro. Void in the Great Pyramids Let's not stray far from Egypt just yet. Here's another unexpected discovery linked to this great civilization. In 2016, researchers using advanced particle physics techniques discovered a mysterious void in Egypt's iconic Great Pyramid of Giza. They used muon radiography, something quite similar to taking an X-ray. These particles, which come from cosmic rays hitting the Earth's atmosphere, can penetrate solid materials like the pyramid stones. By measuring where more particles, known as muons, pass through, scientists can detect voids or lower density areas within the structure. It was through this that they found a corridor-shaped hole in the pyramid. It was about 98 feet and had a similar cross-section as the Grand Gallery, a narrow corridor leading into the King's Chamber. The purpose of this corridor is still a mystery. It could be a structural feature, like other voids in the pyramid, which were built to redistribute its massive weight. Or it might be something entirely different. The speculation is part of the excitement. Number 16. The Piri Reis Map Discovered in 1929 in the Tupkapi Palace in Istanbul, the Piri Reis Map has been a subject of intrigue and debate among historians. The map was created in 1513 by the Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Reis. It's remarkable because it shows parts of the world, like the Americas, in a way that challenges our understanding of 16th century geography. Think about it. How could a map from 1513, just two decades after Columbus sailed to the Caribbean, depict the New World with such detail? The mystery deepens when you consider some of the speculative theories about the map. Some suggest it shows the coastline of Antarctica, a continent not officially discovered until the 19th century. How could this be possible? Was Piri Rees privy to ancient sources of knowledge lost to time? Historians, however, offer a more grounded explanation. They suggest that Piri Rees used multiple sources for his map, including charts from the voyages of Columbus. Despite the logical historical explanations, the Piri Rees map continues to fascinate and puzzle modern researchers. What other secrets might be hidden in ancient maps waiting to be discovered? We can only speculate for now. Number 15. Rosetta Stone in 1799, during Napoleon Bonaparte's campaign in Egypt, French soldiers discovered a broken piece of a large stone slab in the small town of Rosetta. This seemingly ordinary piece of rock later became known as the Rosetta Stone. Later, it became apparent that it wasn't an ordinary discovery. It was a fragment of an ancient decree issued in 196 BC, bearing inscriptions in three different scripts, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, Demotic script, and ancient Greek. Now why is this stone so significant? You see, for centuries, the knowledge of reading ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs had been lost. The Rosetta Stone became a priceless key to deciphering these hieroglyphs, primarily because of the Greek inscription. Since Greek was a well-understood language, scholars could use the Greek text as a reliable reference to decode the other two scripts. However, despite the presence of the Rosetta Stone, the only real progress was made in the early 19th century thanks to Jean-Francois Champollion, a French scholar. He realized that hieroglyphs were symbolic and phonetic, meaning they represented sounds, just like letters in modern languages. This discovery was revolutionary, 
It opened up a world of knowledge about ancient Egyptian history, culture, and language that have been shrouded in mystery for centuries. Number 14. Petra This ancient city is known as Petra, an ancient settlement carved into these rose-red cliffs of southern Jordan. Petra's story began long before its modern discovery as it was established possibly as early as the 4th century BC as the capital of the Nabataean kingdom. However, over the centuries, its significance dwindled, and it was eventually abandoned and forgotten, with only local Bedouin tribes aware of its existence. Fast forward to 1812, a pivotal year in Petra's history. A Swiss explorer named Johann Ludwig Burkhardt, fascinated by tales of a lost city in the desert, set out to rediscover Petra. Disguised as an Arab scholar, Burkhardt gained the trust of local Bedouins, who guided him to the site. What he found was breathtaking, a city of tombs, temples, and intricate structures carved directly into the sandstone cliffs. Petra's architecture is quite extraordinary. The most famous structure, the treasury, shows the Nabataean sophisticated craftsmanship and architectural prowess. The city's water conduit system, which supported a relatively large population in such an arid region, is another marvel of ancient engineering. Moreover, Petra provides invaluable insights into the Nabataean culture, a historically significant but less understood civilization. It was a major trading hub, connecting the silk and spice routes from the east to the west, making it a cultural melting pot of the ancient world. The rediscovery of Petra also ignited widespread interest in archaeology and ancient history. It reminded the world that there are lost cities and forgotten civilizations waiting to be uncovered, each with stories to tell about the human journey through time. Number 13. Nazca Lines The Nazca Lines, a series of large ancient geoglyphs in the Nazca Desert of southern Peru, represent one of the most enigmatic and fascinating archaeological discoveries on our planet. In fact, you might recognize it as one of the most popular yet mysterious sites on Earth. The story of the Nazca Lines begins with their creation, believed to be around 500 BC to 500 CE by the Nazca people. These designs range from simple lines and geometric shapes to intricate depictions of animals, plants, and imaginary beings. However, I often look at them as like warnings, you know, for people flying over back then. If they were flying back then, I don't know. I always forget the time when people started really flying. But if they were flying over this, I, I looked at those as warnings as to what you, what area, what tribe. We own this. We've stated our claim. If you come here, know that we have this and you'll be met with force and resistance and stuff like I, I just look at these as warnings. To intricate depictions of animals, plants and imaginary beings. However, for centuries, these lines went largely unnoticed due to their enormous scale and remote location. The true extent of the Nazca Lines didn't come to light until the 20th century. In the 1920s and 1930s, when commercial airlines started flying across the Peruvian desert, pilots reported seeing curious markings on the ground below. It wasn't until the 1940s that Paul Kosick, an American historian, studied them in detail. He discovered that the lines formed massive coherent figures, only visible from a significant height. To this day, the purpose of the Nazca Lines remains largely speculative. Various theories suggest that they might have been astronomical markers, religious symbols, or even that too. I'm not opposed to it being something astronomical. You know what I mean? Something to aliens or something, uh, a, a signal or a message to them. I'm not opposed to that being as well too. But I just don't know why I feel like it was a, is a warning. Even part of elaborate rituals to bring rain. The precision and scale of these geoglyphs, considering the technology of the time, add to the intrigue. Moreover, the environmental conditions of the Nazca Desert have preserved these lines for thousands of years, which is remarkable in itself. This longevity has allowed for extensive study and admiration, but has also deepened the mystery, as the original creators and their intentions remain largely unknown. Number 12. Derinkuyu Underground City The story of the underground city of Derinkuyu began in 1963. A local homeowner was renovating his home when he stumbled upon a mysterious room behind a wall in his basement. This accidental discovery led to an exploration that unveiled an entire underground city, sprawling several levels deep into the earth. Derinkuyu is not just a few rooms and tunnels, it's an extensive complex that can house up to 20,000 people along with their livestock and food stores. 
This subterranean city comprises various rooms, including living quarters, stables, churches, storage rooms, and wineries. The engineering feats involved are staggering. It has ventilation shafts, water wells, and a sophisticated security system with massive stone doors that can be closed inside to protect its inhabitants. This ancient underground city is believed to date back to at least the 8th to 7th centuries BCE and is thought to have been built by the Phrygians, an Indo-European people. However, it was expanded and extensively used by early Christians as a refuge to escape persecution, especially in the Byzantine era. Known mainly as a tourist spot, many people from all around the globe travel to Petra to see its beauty in person. Number 11. Terracotta Warriors In 1974, in the Shanxi province of China, a group of local farmers digging a well stumbled upon one of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the 20th century. Instead of water, they unearthed pieces of terracotta statues. This chance discovery led to an incredible revelation. A vast army of terracotta warriors buried for over two millennia. The terracotta army, as it came to be known, is part of the extensive mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. This underground army consisted of over 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots with 520 horses, and 150 cavalry horses, all arranged in battle formations. Each soldier has distinct facial features, expressions, and attire, showing the dedication and the remarkable skill and craftsmanship of ancient Chinese artisans. The level of detail in these figures has offered historians and archaeologists a wealth of information about the clothing, weaponry, and even hairstyles of the time. The site has also revealed ancient techniques used in sculpture and painting, giving us a deeper understanding of the technological capabilities of ancient China. Number 10. Let's us also know how good they were. Like, you go back and you look look at that. This is a perfect view, by the way. I couldn't, I couldn't do this again if I tried to. But look at the detail. Like, they were really, really good. So much so it's scary because they didn't have the tools that we have. So... To see the, the skill. And for me, I don't think just one or two people. This was multiple people had a hand in this, you know. So it, it's, it's just mind blowing to me. Maybe not to y'all, but to see this, I'm just in awe of somebody's or multiple people's talent to be able to pull this off and make it look the way it looked to represent who it's supposed to represent. For understanding of the technological capabilities of ancient China. Number 10. Let's see the Iceman. Iceman. Let's see the Iceman. A naturally mummified man discovered in the Alps is like a time capsule from the Copper Age, yeah. easily making him among the greatest and most significant finds in history. His discovery in 1991 by hikers in the Utstel Alps on the border between Austria and Italy was a sensational moment for archaeology and history. First off, let's see is old, really old. He lived around 5,300 years ago making him the oldest known natural human mummy. What's remarkable is how well preserved he is, thanks to being encased in ice for millennia. This preservation gives us an unprecedented look into his life and times. One of the most exciting aspects of studying Nutsi is understanding his lifestyle and health. Analysis of his body has revealed that he was about 45 years old when he died, which was relatively old for that period. He had tattoos, which some experts believe might have been a form of ancient acupuncture possibly to treat ailments like arthritis. Utsi's last meals, analyzed from his stomach contents, provided a glimpse into the diet of Copper Age people. He consumed a well-balanced mix of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, including wild grains, meats, and plants. This suggests a sophisticated knowledge of food sources and preparation. His clothing and gear are also telling. Utsi wore a... It sound like he ate better than I do. <laughs> I mean, I don't always get it right. Coat leggings, a loincloth, and shoes, all made from different skins and leathers, showing a high skill level in materials use. His gear, including a copper axe, a flint knife, and an unfinished bow, indicates he might have been a hunter or warrior. However, one of the most mysterious aspects of Utsi was his death. Initially, it was thought he died from exposure, but later, the CT scan revealed a flint arrowhead launched in his shoulder, suggesting he was slain. This finding has led to numerous theories about his life and the circumstances of his death. Also a reminder of how brutal he was back then, the arrow to the head. Jeez, man, 
I don't think I do want to go on a I, no no time machine going back to that time for me. They were brutal back then. Number nine, Antikythera mechanism. The Antikythera mechanism is often hailed as the world's first analog computer. This complex device was discovered in 1901 in a shipwreck off the Greek island of Antikythera, initially overshadowed by other treasures. This corroded bronze artifact soon revealed its extraordinary secrets. This ancient device, dating back to around 100 BC, became what many consider the world's first analog computer. Encased in a wooden box and roughly the size of a large book, the Antikythera mechanism is a complex assembly of gears and dials. Its purpose was to predict astronomical positions and eclipses for calendar and astrological purposes, and it could even track the four-year cycle of the ancient Olympic Games. At least, this is what we believe its purpose was. But perhaps, the real significance of the Antikythera mechanism lies in its challenge to our understanding of technological progress. Before its discovery, such intricate gear-based devices were thought to have emerged only in medieval Europe. A millennium later, this artifact suggests that ancient Greek scientists possessed not only advanced technical skills, but also a deep understanding of astronomy and mathematics. The mechanism's remarkable sophistication rivals that of 18th century clocks, and even today, we've not fully unraveled its complete history. Number 8. Staffordshire Hoard In July 2009, Terry Herbert, a metal detectorist was exploring a recently plowed field near Litchfield in Staffordshire, England, when his metal detector signaled something beneath the ground. What he found was nothing short of astonishing, gold and silver objects peeking through the soil. This was just the beginning. Over the next few days, Terry and archaeologists uncovered over 3,500 items, making it the largest hoard of Anglo-Saxon gold and silver ever found. The treasure includes over 5 kilograms of gold and 1.4 kilograms of silver, far bigger than any other hoard from this period. The craftsmanship of the items, which includes sword hilts, helmet parts, and religious artifacts, is exquisite, showcasing the high level of skill of the Anglo-Saxon artisans. Since we barely know anything about the Anglo-Saxon era, a time when records didn't exist, the Staffordshire Hoard gives us a chance to learn more about people at the time. Number 7. Lucy In 1974, in the Afar region of Ethiopia, a team of archaeologists led by Donald Johansson stumbled upon a remarkable find. While surveying the area, they found pieces of a fossilized skeleton that turned out to be one of the oldest and most complete hominid remains ever discovered. The skeleton was affectionately named Lucy, after the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which the team listened to at their camp. Lucy's remains are about 3.2 million years old, making her one of the earliest known ancestors of modern humans. She belonged to a species known as Australopithecus afarensis, which walked upright on two legs, a key milestone in human evolution. Lucy's discovery revolutionized our understanding of the human family tree. Her relatively small skull, combined with her bipedal structure, bridged a crucial gap in our knowledge about the transition from ape-like creature to early humans. This has helped scientists piece together how and when our ancestors began walking upright. Moreover, Lucy is significant because of how well-preserved her skeleton is. While not complete, it includes most of the major bones, providing invaluable insights into the physique, diet, and lifestyle of early hominids. This level of preservation is rare and offers a unique opportunity to study aspects of our evolution that would otherwise be based on mere speculation. I don't know how I feel about that. I've often thought about it, don't get me wrong, but I don't know how I feel about that. Did we once walk around on all fours and eventually just start walking upright? That was our evolution? I don't know how I feel about that. I know that that really gets under some people's skin. Like they really don't like to hear that or saying we're descendants of apes or ape-like creatures or something like that. But I don't know. And then here, here's a, a, a thought. Do we go back to that one day? Go back to crawling and, and walking around on all fours? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a thought, man. I cannot lie. I can't shake it either. Number six, Tomb of Sunken Skulls. In 2009, archaeologists explored the bottom of a small, shallow lake in Kennel Jordan when they encountered something unexpected and chilling. 
They found an underwater structure containing human skulls, some mounted on stakes. This discovery was eerie and intriguing, prompting many questions about the people who created this tomb and their reasons for such a macabre arrangement. First, it dates back to the Stone Age, around 8,000 years ago. This was a time when humans were transitioning from nomadic lifestyles to more settled farming communities, and the discovery provided rare insights into their rituals and belief systems. Out of the 11 skulls found, two were mounted on wooden stakes, suggesting some form of ritualistic display. This type of burial practice is highly unusual and unlike most other European Stone Age burial sites. It raises questions about the spiritual or religious beliefs of these ancient people and their attitudes towards death and the afterlife. What's more horrifying is the fact that the skulls showed signs of blunt force trauma, yet it's unclear whether these injuries were the cause of death or part of a post-mortem ritual. This find is still surrounded by mystery, and we're yet to learn the entire truth about it. Number 5. The Growble Man That one's kind of hard to understand as well, though. We've heard them say they take animals to the afterlife, so they put those in the tomb. We, we've heard them put jewelry. We've heard them put all kind of different things. But a, a skull on a stick, I, I can't for the life of me think about what that could represent or help you transition to the next life. What taking that with you does for you, you know? Does it show you made the sacrifice of someone? You're here and this is proof you made the sacrifice of someone? Or what does that mean? They always felt strongly about animals and different things and, and what they wanted to take with them, riches and different stuff like that as an offering to the gods does a skull is that what that is i don't know it's just interesting in 1952 in the peat bogs of Graubel in denmark workers made a startling discovery as they were cutting peat they unearthed a human body but this was no ordinary find it was the Graubel man one of the most well-preserved bog bodies ever found this level of preservation was so remarkable that initially it was thought to be a recent murder victim even though his body dates back to the 3rd century BC during the late Iron Age, it exhibits remarkable preservation. Without the acidic, low-oxygen environment of the bog, his skin, hair, and facial features would not have been recognizable. It was only because of the peat bog that his body didn't look like it belonged to someone who perished over 2,000 years ago. Just like other bodies found in bogs, it seemed like the Grobel Man was also a victim of human sacrifice. As I mentioned, the Grubble Man is just among the several bog bodies discovered in Europe, but the level of preservation made this discovery stand out. Number 4. Newgrange Imagine stepping back over 5,000 years into the past to a time before the pyramids of Egypt were built. That's where the story of Newgrange begins, before the age of the ancient pyramids built by one of the greatest civilizations in history, Newgrange built during the Neolithic period around 3200 BC, is older than Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Giza. Located in County Meath, Ireland, along the River Boyne, it's a large circular mound with a stone passageway and interior chambers. Newgrange was constructed using an impressive 200,000 tons of materials. Scholars estimate that building this monument would have required around 30 years and involved a workforce of approximately 300 individuals. Historically, it's believed to have been a tomb or a religious temple, but its exact purpose remains mysterious. Perhaps the most astonishing aspect is its alignment with the winter solstice. Every year during the solstice, sunlight enters the tomb through a roof box above the entrance and illuminates the inner chamber. This incredible feat of ancient engineering demonstrates a sophisticated understanding of astronomy. The site is also famed for its art. The stones around the entrance and inside the passage are adorned with intricate carvings, including spirals, lozenges, and chevrons. This careful placement of these carvings suggests a deliberate design, and their significance remains a subject of scholarly study and interpretation. These are some of the finest examples of Neolithic art in Europe, and give us a glimpse into the symbolic world of our ancestors. Newgrange offers a unique insight into the lives, beliefs, and skills of the people who built it. The fact that it stood the test of time and is still structurally sound over 5,000 years already makes it an incredible sight. It's so incredible that Newgrange is part of the Bruna Bonnier UNESCO World Heritage Site, recognized for its cultural and historical significance. Number 3. Sutton Hoo Imagine yourself in England back in 1939. The world is on the brink of war, 
that in a quiet corner of Suffolk, something extraordinary is about to unfold. This is the story of Sutton Hoo, a discovery that dramatically reshaped our understanding of the early medieval period. Sutton Hoo was discovered when a local landowner, Edith Pretty, hired archaeologist Basil Brown to investigate large mounds on her property. What they uncovered was beyond anyone's wildest expectations. It was a ship burial, a grave of monumental proportions, with an entire ship serving as the final resting place for what was believed to be an Anglo-Saxon king. The site, dating back to the 7th century, revealed an untouched ship burial filled with an array of stunning artifacts, a treasure trove of gold, silver, and garnet, including an iconic helmet that has become symbolic of the Anglo-Saxon era. The craftsmanship of these artifacts is also incredible. They show a level of sophistication and artistry that challenged the then prevailing notion of the Dark Ages as a period of cultural decline. Sutton Hoo's treasures have shed light on the connections between the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms and the wider world, suggesting a period of rich cultural exchange and wealth. Number 2. The Grave of Richard III In 2012, a car park in Leicester, England became the unlikely setting for one of the most remarkable historical discoveries in recent times the grave of Richard III, a king whose reputation and final resting place had been shrouded in mystery for centuries. The quest began when a team of archaeologists who, armed with historical texts and a healthy dose of determination, set out to solve a 500-year-old mystery. Their target was to locate the lost grave of King Richard III, who died in the Battle of Bosworth Field in 1485. Many believed his remains were lost to history, perhaps irretrievably mixed into the soil of Leicester. But the team's efforts paid off spectacularly. Beneath the modern landscape of the car park, they uncovered the remains of the long-lost king. The identification was confirmed through a combination of skeletal analysis, DNA testing, and historical accounts. Finding the remains of Richard III allowed historians to separate fact from fiction, providing a more nuanced view of his life and rule. After all, the state of Richard's skeleton revealed much about his life and the nature of his death. The spine showed signs of severe scoliosis, challenging age-old depictions of him as a hunchback tyrant. This find not only unearthed a piece of lost history, but also enriched our understanding of a tumultuous period in English history. And now it's time <clears throat> for today's topic. This discovery could become the most significant and long-awaited of the 21st century. Among the artifacts and discoveries that I told you earlier are artifacts connected to aliens. Despite the vague correlation, They've already captured the imagination of many, and so imagine the surprise of these archaeologists when they were presented with the alleged body of an extraterrestrial creature found in the lush wilderness of South America. Naturally, skeptics believe the discovery is another elaborate hoax meant to excite UFOologists, but we won't know for sure until more information about this discovery surfaces. Hey, it makes me think that the aliens, uh, not the aliens, the government has an alien burial site. What do they do if we if we believe that they have biologics, as David Grush said and stated before Congress, if we believe they have it and they keep them alive as long as they could, what do they do when, them, when they die? Do they burn them? Do they bury them? So either we got ashes somewhere that's probably been sprinkled somewhere or they're keeping somewhere or we have an alien burial site. Think about that. I'll let you be the verdict on this one. Number 1. The Crystal Skulls. Crystal Skulls The tale of the Crystal Skulls began in the late 19th and early 20th centuries when several of these artifacts started appearing. They were brought forward by adventurers and collectors who claimed to have discovered them in ruins of ancient civilizations in Central and South America. The most famous of these, the Mitchell Hedges Skull, was allegedly found in a Mayan ruin in Belize. But what exactly are these skulls? Well, they're simply quartz that depicts human bones. They're often claimed to be pre-Columbian Mesoamerican artifacts. Some even attribute mystical properties to them, suggesting they could be relics of lost civilizations like Atlantis or products of extraterrestrial visitors. The most perplexing aspect of these skulls is the level of craftsmanship needed to carve them out of single quartz blocks. This is where skeptics raise their doubts. You see, research and analysis in recent years have suggested that many if not all of the known crystal skulls are likely not ancient artifacts but rather modern creations from the 19th or 20th centuries tools marks from modern rotary and jewelers equipment which wouldn't have been available to ancient mesoamerican artisans have been found on some skulls despite the doubts about their origins 
the mystery surrounding these skulls continues to exist.